Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So, given the bombshell revelation, that wasn't necessarily a bombshell that Donna Brazil put out saying that the Democratic Party cheated Bernie Sanders in a primary. The term that was used, I believe, was rigged. The primaries. There's been interesting developments. Now, the developments that I'm going to make here have to do with a certain amount of shame that's missing among Democrats. Now, you have a few Democrats, Elizabeth Warren, Tulsi Gabbard being notable, saying, okay, you're right, they cheated. They cheated. They cheated Bernie Sanders. And that seems to be the straightforward, most noble thing to do. To say, you're right. You're absolutely right. You caught us, the Democratic Party, red-handed. We cheated Bernie Sanders. After all, the guy calls himself a socialist, and we're capitalists, and we didn't necessarily want that element in our party. We don't like that part of the party. We just want you to vote for us. We don't necessarily want you to regain influence. You're right. You're right. So we cheated him. You, we cheated him. Long ago, we stopped representing the things that we said we stood for. We stopped representing those items of progressivism and the 99% and workers. We no longer represent those things. And the public, being wise to our jive, realized that we didn't represent those things. And we ended up with a fundamental problem of how do you get elected when people stop voting for you? That was our problem. We solved our problem by cheating. We solved that problem by cheating. So yes, we wanted Hillary Clinton at our office. We did what we needed to do to get Hillary Clinton out of the primaries. At which point she lost the reality shows. But we did our job. We got her into the general election. Now, that would be the most straightforward path to solve their issue. The issue being all of these people fleeing the parties, not being able to win anywhere in the state or in the federal government. That's a fundamental problem. How do you, as a party, find any level of legitimacy when you can't actually win a goddamn election? How? How? You lost House, Senate, Supreme Court, all throughout the United States. Why? Why? Why is that particular faction of Democrats still in charge of the party? Why? I understand that this answer has to do with cash and everything else. I'm making this point from a more philosophical point. If the public itself finds you wanting, if the public itself does not want you in that office, you may have a faction of the public that says, yes, we're cultural Democrats, in which case we're going to vote Democrat no matter what the Democrat does. Fair enough. You have your faction. Everyone has their faction. But let's be honest, the reason that you guys have been able to stay in power in this way is because of cash. That's it. Has no level of popularity, has no level of legitimacy. If you're looking at polls, you guys are abysmal. As ghastly as Donald Trump is, if the election was held today, he would beat the stuffing out of Hillary Clinton again. He would beat her again. That has everything to do with who you are. That has nothing to do with who he is. There's a massive dis difference in those things. Um, Peter Dow, Peter fucking Dow, pulled his head out of Hillary Clinton's ass for lunch, but also to send off a tweet. The tweet that Peter Dow sent off, hastily sent off, before re-entrenching his head into Hillary Clinton's ass, was about Donna Brazil. Now, this is an interesting tweet, because Donna Brazil seems to attack Donald Brazil. Now the tweet is going after Donald Trump, but it's almost as if Donald Brazil is saying that the other Donald Brazil was lying. This is what I mean. Today's lesson, this is Donald Brazil. Being quoted by Donald Trump means being misquoted by Donald Trump. Stop trolling me. Hashtag, never said Hillary rigged the election. I never said it. Donald Brazil, I never said that. All right, fair enough. If Donna Brazil says that she's never said that Hillary Clinton rigged the election, then fair enough. 
then that's what Donna Brazil said. Let's go to the article that Donna Brazil herself wrote. Let's go to that article. Let's have a conversation with that Donna Brazil because clearly that Donna Brazil doesn't know what the other Donna Brazil said. This is the political piece. Notice the author. Notice the author. Inside Hillary Clinton's secret takeover of the DNC. When I was asked to run for the Democratic Party after the Russians hacked our emails, I stumbled onto a shocking truth about the Hillary Clinton campaign by Donna Brazil. Are these the same Donna Brazils? I think they are, but let's, let's keep going. This is where she puts a knife in debris. Now, then look, you can say either put a knife. There's two ways you can think about this this part. Either she puts a knife in Deborah Walsman Schultz, or she saves Deborah Walsman Schultz. I don't know which one it is. You be the judge. She's saying Deborah Walsman Schultz was a bad manager. I see Deborah Walsman Schultz was corrupt. She's trying to say, no, she wasn't corrupt. She was just horrible and competent at her job. Which one is more likely? I can agree or I can believe that Deborah Walsman Schultz is incompetent. Doesn't necessarily mean she's not also corrupt. Uh, let's just read the part first. Debbie was not a good manager. She hadn't been very interested in controlling the party. She let the Clinton headquarters in Brooklyn do as it desired so she didn't have to inform the party officers how bad the situation was. Now, that's slightly a weird way to put it. I mean, did she put Clinton headquarters in charge purely so people couldn't see what was going on? Or did she put Clinton's headquarters in charge because she wanted Hillary Clinton to win and the simplest path was to just let Hillary Clinton control the apparatus? Now, an important point to understand is this is before the primaries. This is before they chose anybody. That's an important point. So, right off the bat, you're saying, no, we didn't rig it. But the other Donna Brazil is saying, we let, or the Democratic Party allowed Hillary Clinton to essentially control the DNC during the course of the primaries. That sounds like rigging it to me. Let's keep going. How much control Brooklyn had for how long was still something I had been trying to uncover for the last few weeks. By September 7th, the day I called Bernie, I had found my proof and it broke my heart. It's epic. It's epic. It broke Donna Brazil's heart. It cratered her. The pain of a woman. Look, I find these. Th I always find themes like this epic when I read this stuff in books, regardless of who's saying it. It's this thing of a uh, the pain of a man, the pain of an individual. This person who was this hapless soldier who was innocent, an angel, a dandelion in a field of corruption. I go into this. I believe in my party and I believe in my goal and I believe in my cause. And I find something that breaks me. It breaks my heart. They let me down. They let Donna Brazil down. Let's keep going. I love this. It's fucking awesome. The Saturday morning after the convention in July 1st, I called Gary Gensler, the chief financial officer of the Hillary Clinton campaign. He wasted no words. He told me the Democratic Party was broke and two million in debt. What? I screamed. I'm an officer of this party, and they've been telling us that everything is fine, and, and they were raising money with no problems. That wasn't true, he said. Officials from the Hillary's campaign had taken a look at the DNC books. Obama left the party $20, $24 million in debt, $15 million in bank debt, and more than $8 million owed to vendors after the 2012 campaign, and had been paying it off very slowly. Obama's campaign was not scheduled to pay it off until 2016. Hillary for America campaign and Hillary's Victory Fund had taken care of 80% of the remaining debt in 2016, about $10 million, and had placed the party on an allowance. Now, that part is important for a few reasons. Your parent puts you on an allowance. Think about it. You were 12. You are 8. Your mom gave you an allowance. You got 10 bucks, 20 bucks, how much ever your mom gave you. 
What if you didn't do the groceries? What if you didn't do what your mom said that week? What if your mom told you to take out the trash and you just said, fuck that, I'm not taking out the trash? Are you going to get your allowance? I'm asking this question because of the terminology that that Donna Brazil is using. Hillary Clinton's campaign, Brooklyn office, Hillary Clinton put the party on an allowance. If that's not showing domination and control, I don't know what is. Now, she's already said that Deborah Walsman Schultz handed over the reins or the keys of the kingdom of the DNC to the Hillary Clinton campaign. That was the first part. Now, if you honestly don't believe that one of the party controlling the DNC when other parties are at, or other people are actually running, I should say one of the campaigns is controlling the DNC where you're supposed to have multiple campaigns running. And that same DNC is supposed to be impartial to all of the party, all of the people involved. And yet, one of the people has full control over the apparatus itself. And you're telling me that this is unfair, that this is not rigged, that this is impartial. Is Donna Brazil on something? Is Donna Brazil on something? I mean, I, I don't know how to resolve these two. Meaning, I don't know how to resolve this Donna Brazil being misquoted by Donald Trump. Never say Hillary rigged the election. And this Donna Brazil, who's clearly stating that Hillary Clinton rigged the election. Let's keep going. That that part, the, the reason why I read the up top part, there's more to it. You can read the article yourself. But it boils down to this thing of, we were broke. We didn't have any money. The Democratic Party was going to completely collapse if it didn't necessarily get the money from Hillary Clinton. Meaning... The Democratic Party was facing an existential threat. It was facing an existential threat. It didn't have money to keep going. Hillary Clinton was giving it money to keep going. Because she was giving it money, she exerted influence on the DNC. I, I don't understand how this is not rigged. I don't understand the point of view that's being taken to look at this and say, this process was not rigged. In favor of one of the other candidates. I don't know how this honestly argued, but let's keep going. The article continues with this idea that Hillary Clinton was essentially breaking campaign finance laws. Donna Brazil essentially said Hillary Clinton was breaking the law. She, later on in the article, she says, I'm not saying it was illegal. I'm just saying that she was only supposed to take $2,700 and she was taking 99% of the cash. This, this is an amazing document, that's all. Let's keep going. All right, so. All right, here we are, let's keep going. Right around the time of the convention, the leaked emails revealed Hillary's campaign was grabbing money from the state parties for its own purposes leaving the state with very little to support down-ballot races. A political story published on May 2nd, 2016 described the big fundraising vehicle she launched through the states the summer before she quoting a vow that she was going to rebuild the party from the ground up. I suspect she was going to rebuild it in her own image, seeing that those parties were completely beholden to her for cash. Your existence is at stake. Think about that. The very existence the air that you goddamn breathe, the political air that you breathe, is completely dependent upon Hillary Clinton. And you're looking me in the face and telling me that this is an impartial and this is a completely fair process. Makes no sense. That doesn't make sense. Yet the states kept half of 1% of the 82 million they had amassed from the extravagant fundraisers the Hillary Clinton campaign was holding just as Gary had described to me when he and I talked in August. When the political story described the arrangement as essentially money laundering for the Clinton campaign, Hillary's people were outraged at being accused of doing something shady. Bernie's people were angry for their own reasons, saying that this was part of a calculated strategy to throw the nomination to Hillary Clinton. I wanted to believe Hillary, who made campaign finance reform part of her platform, but I had made this pledge to Bernie 
and did not want to disappoint him. I kept asking party lawyers and DNC staff to show me the agreement that made before the party sharing the money they raised. There was a lot of shuffling of feet looking and looking the other way. Uh, where is it? I had been wondering about why I couldn't release write a press release without passing it to Brooklyn. Well, here was my answer. When the party chooses nominee, the customers for the candidate seem to start to exercise more control over the party. If the party has an incumbent candidate, that was the case with Clinton in 1996 or Obama in 2012, this kind of arrangement is seamless because the party is already under control of the president. When you have an open contest without an incumbent and competitive primaries, the party comes under the candidate's control only after the nominee is chosen. Well, when it's certain. When I was manager of Al Gore's campaign in 2000, we started inserting our people into the DNC in June. The victory fund agreement, however, had been signed August 2015, just four months after Hillary announced her candidacy and nearly a year before she officially had the nomination. I had to keep my promise to Bernie. In fact, I read this part. The funding arrangement with Hillary for America and the Victory Fund Agreement was not illegal, but it sure looked unethical. If the fight had been fair, one campaign would not have control of the party before the voters had decided which one wanted to lead. This was not a criminal act, but as I saw it, it compromised the party's integrity. I had to keep my promise to Bernie. I was in agony. As I dialed him, oh, the epic pain of a woman, of a corrupt Democrat, having to call and be honest about the fact that they were corrupt. Amazing. I had to keep my promise to Bernie. I was in agony as I dialed him. Keeping this secret was against everything that I stood for, all I valued as a woman and as a public servant. All I valued as a woman. That's Epic! That's epic! That's epic! Hello, Senator. I've completed my review of the DNC and I did find the cancer, I said. But I will not kill the patient. I discussed the fundraising agreement that each of the candidates had signed. Bernie was familiar with it, but he and his staff ignored it. They had their own way of raising money through small donations. Uh, just to be clear on this, Sanders signed a fundraising agreement also, but their fundraising agreement had different things than the Hillary Clinton campaign agreement. The Hillary Clinton campaign had this thing of we're able to make strategic decisions. We're able to essentially influence hiring, communications, and all this other stuff. The Sanders campaign had no such thing. They had their own ways of raising money through small donations. I described how Hillary's campaign had taken another step. I told Bernie I had found the Hillary joint fundraising agreement. I explained that the cancer was that she had exerted the control over the party long before she became the nominee. I had known this. Had I known this, I would have never accepted the interim chair. But there we were with only weeks before the election. Now, to be fair to Donna Brazil, she never used the term rig. She's using the term cancer. She's using the term cancer. As Bill Clinton said, it depends on what your definition of is is. Now, I'd argue that you don't have to use the term rig for something to be rigged. You can use all sorts of euphemisms. People use all sorts of euphemisms for sex and everything else. Doesn't necessarily mean they're not necessarily talking about the same thing. You're describing something that's in physical matter reality. People have all sorts of synonyms for describing those things. But what does it mean? We're talking about this issue of meaning. What I'm getting to the point of one campaign exerted control over a party, over a process that was supposed to be impartial. And in exerting that control, they pulled it in a direction that was beneficial to one of the other campaigns. The campaign that was being cheated screamed and said that they were being cheated and the other people who won it and were taking advantage of this screamed that these people are lying, that these people should be ashamed of themselves, that these people are denigrating the image of a great woman, that this is the first woman to win a primary of a major contest and you're denigrating that image and you're being sexist and racist and you're being Russian bots and all of these nasty terms and all of those people for the last 15 months were lying. They were lying through their teeth. 
And right now, Donna Brazil comes out hawking a book. And in the process of hawking a book, there's a level of honesty that's dredged up in her because she wants to make the profits from hawking this book and she wants this to be... She needs something in the book to draw people to the book. Fair enough. Fair enough. But what she's saying is comporting with reality. That's what I'm getting at. The problem is that this other Donna Brazil, what the other Donna Brazil say is not comporting with reality. I understand Donna Brazil's thing of wanting to backtrack. And Keith Oberman made the point that Donna Brazil ended her career at this point because Donna Brazil told the truth. How dare she tell the truth? That should tell you something about Keith Oberman. That should tell you something about all these hacks. A person comes up. I was in the belly of the beast. I was the chairman. I found news and information that says all of these Bernie Sanders supporters, all of these leftists, all of these independents, all of these Trump supporters, even Donald Trump himself were absolutely right that the Democratic Party was rigging the Democratic primary. They wanted their person. The public didn't want that person. And they did what they needed to do to put that person in that office. And now they're backtracking, including Donna Brazil herself, a good soldier to the end. A good soldier to the end. I would say that saying I quote unquote never use the term rigged is the same thing as it depends on what your definition of is is. She may not have used the term or word I quote unquote rigged. So she may be right. That document may not have used the term rigged. Fair enough. But anybody in their right mind, anybody who's honest with themselves, there's no way to look at what Donna Brazil wrote and not come away from that saying, okay, Donna Brazil is right. They cheated. It was supposed to be impartial and it wasn't. This one went immensely long and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I will end it at that. Sometimes legal stuff turns on this idea of the technical terminology that's being used. But in real world, just human beings can look at something and understand that just because a person used a different synonym for it, that the meaning of it is still the same thing. Just because Donna Brazil never used the exact terminology, they rigged it, doesn't necessarily mean that the entire document that Donna Brazil wrote didn't mean the exact same thing as they rigged it. Which they did. The backtracking is pathetic and embarrassing. I don't have no idea. I would imagine Donna Brazil has been getting a lot of phone calls. And Donna Brazil went on Twitter and said, okay, I never said they rigged it. I will leave it at that. All right, guys. If you enjoy the content, feel free to share, like, subscribe, and of course, you can always support the Patreon. Thanks, guys.